guys, we're out here with the Bronco Extreme Sport Edition. This scooter is amazing. Super fast, super smooth, and a lot of unique features that I think you guys will like. Andrew, why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? It's an amazing machine. I've had a chance to ride it for a few days. It's so surreal just riding the scooter. I, I really can't really put into words how different it is than any other scooter we've tried. I truly believe the main difference is the sine wave controller. The 100 amp sine wave controller that's on this scooter is very quiet. Almost every electric vehicle we ride is extremely quiet, but this one is like stealth like quiet. I'll get it up to 50 miles per hour. It doesn't feel like I'm going 50 miles per hour. I can't hear any whining of the motors. And um, it's a little scary, but scary fun. <laughs> that's what I like to say about it. It's got some awesome features about it. The suspension is one of the best things I've ever tried. Um, not only from the air suspension in the back, the DNM air suspension that you can adjust, the DNM hydraulic suspension in the front that you can adjust, and also the steering damper. So it's rock solid. I do speed tests all the time. I'm not afraid to go 50 miles per hour, but they're a little bit sketchy sometimes to go 50 miles per hour on some of these scooters. Where this scooter, when you hit 50 miles per hour, it feels very solid. The only thing that I would really knock on it is these um, the collapsible handlebars, which you can always change for a different type of handlebar setup. There's the only slight movement, it's not a lot, but when you're going 60 miles an hour, you kind of want to have it all rock solid. But I do love that they've made it so big and wide. This scooter is massive, it's so smooth. Like, I've never had a, a scooter where I can control going two miles per hour, no problem at all. And if I want to go faster, just, just pin it. I would knock on this. This thing's a little bit slippery, the, the kick plate, and it's a little bit higher pitch than some people would like. So I do think they should angle this a little bit more. So I have heard that's in the works. The other thing I'd knock on is they've used these cheaper buttons. These are the only, this is probably the only thing that I really find is cheap on this scooter. Everything else is rock solid. It's got an awesome fender in the back that protects you from any type of water spray. One thing I've noticed Matt Boggs mentioned to me is that when he put this, when he put the DNM adjustable um, air suspension on an 11X, it would actually compress it and you have to actually almost get a higher size or um, a bigger size to overcompensate for it. But I think the reason why this one works is because of the angle is this way. As you can see, I've never bottomed it out. I always move this over to see what's going on, but I've never bottomed out the shock yet. And um, we're on the 11X, it's almost, it's vertically sitting. So people will actually bottom out the shock quite a bit. So not the best choice for 11, 011X, but a very good choice for the Bronco Extreme. The lights aren't the brightest, it's also lower. So if you're gonna do a lot of night riding, I definitely suggest you to get a better headlight that attaches to the top of the post. The, some people have mentioned the steering column um, folding mechanism they're not the biggest fan of, which is similar to the Cabo Mantis 010X. I have no problem with it. I've got zero wobble on it. It it's, tightens really tight. One thing I love about this is how big this clamp is. So normally what I'm finding is a lot of the clamps are too small that you run, you run into this when you're trying to twist it. So there's no f movement for your fingers to get in there. Where this, I can actually really tighten it nice and tight and I have no problem getting my fingers in between here and twisting them rather than running into each other, which I hate on the Zero 10X and also on the Mantis. The Mantis isn't as bad, but the Zero 10X is one of the worst folding mechanisms unless you get the rugged clamp. Screen damper, I've got it tightened as tight as I can go because I've been running some high speed tests. It's only 50 degrees today. I was able to get the scooter up to 55 miles per hour, but yesterday was 30 degrees. I only could get it up to 45 miles per hour. So that really shows you how temperatures um, impact speeds quite a bit. But back to the steering damper, it's really tight. It's amazing because I can actually, I've done it a few times where I'll, you shouldn't do this. Don't try this at home, kids. Yeah. I can actually be riding it and take my hands off of the handlebars and it'll still coast because the steering damper is so stiff. So you shouldn't do that, <laughs> testing it out to see, hey, how stiff is the steering damper? Well, you can make it really stiff. As you can see, it takes a lot of force, but what it does is it helps with safety. Safety is extremely important when you're going 50 miles per hour plus. And even when you're going 35 miles per hour plus, it's, it's a really um, important to stay on top of it. So what it does is it prevents you from overcorrecting. 
so when you do get in a crash, or if you do actually get the speed wobbles, you don't overcorrect because the steering damper is helping it out. It's got nut hydraulic brakes on here. Um, it's got 11 inch wide tires, or 11 inch in diameter tires and four inch wide. It's on a split rim. It is a tube in um, pneumatic tire, so they leave it for a split rim for easy tire changes. The braking is really incredible on it. It's got the XC handlebars, so they're collapsible, but they're not the not the my favorite on a scooter. How does that collapsing mechanism work? Um, it collapses pretty easily. Oh, similar yeah, to the other just, ones. Yeah, just pulls reviewed. off like this, and um, you basically just open it up like that, and it collapses in like that. And so, one thing that's really neat about it is it's extremely wide. It's a very wide handlebar, so if. Honestly, for me, I would change this out for a solid handlebar choice. Another pitfall to this too is these things do rotate on you, but you can fix that with hairspray. So the trick is, is either you get a different type of handlebar with um, Allen bolts that will tighten onto it so you don't have any type of movement, or you can just pull these off, spray a little bit of hairspray on it, stick it on there, and it'll stay where you want it to stay. So that's the trick for a lot of people out there. It's got a really different bell for it. You would think it'd have a big horn, but at the same time, those big horns that are on the Cabo Wolf Warrior, they're awesome. They're great for cars, but they scare the crap out of pedestrians. So this doesn't sound like a 70 mile per hour scooter's coming towards your way. So that's what's good about it. What does that accessory button do for you? This is for the lights. So that's for the lights that are on the deck. But like I said, the lighting on the deck, it's not the brightest. It's not gonna be the best thing for night riding. I, I would definitely highly suggest getting a better um, lighting system. The other thing that's really nice is it locks into itself when folded. It weighs 106 pounds, so it's pretty heavy, but at least it does lock into itself when folded. The other thing about it, the other features that really set it apart is the 100 amp sine wave controller, 72 volt system, so it's got a max output of 80, a peak watt output of 8,400 watts. And how you come up with that calculation is at a full charge, it's 84 volts times 100 amp controller, 8,400 um, watts of peak power. So really impressive scooter. But like I said, is the sine wave controller is astonishing. It really is. It's bar none the best controller I've ever felt on a scooter. Um, I'm hoping to try out some other ones here in the future with sine wave controllers, but really, I couldn't really put into words how awesome this is. It's really just blows my mind, mind boggling sometimes when I actually ride the scooter because normally the other ones like a Cobble Wolf Warrior, that's really quiet as well, but just so much more loud compared to this. So just a total different experience, even with the same tire, same, same, um, every, almost everything's identical, 72 volts. It is different amp hours. So this one is a 72 volt, 35 amp hour system, which equates to 2,520 watt hours. So it's a massive battery. Yeah, just a ton of fun, man. <laughs> it's hard to really explain it until you actually get to ride it. Uh, but luckily we've been blessed to be one of the first American reviewers to actually give this thing a test. Set up for dual charging. This one came with a five amp rapid charger and it's hard to say what's going to happen. So I was talking to Ben about it. On the website it says it comes standard with a 1.7 amp hour charger. But um, not amp hours, but a 1.7 amps charger. And um, so they said that you can upgrade and buy a 5 amp charger, speed charger. But the first two that were sold in America came with 5 amp chargers. This one came to me with a 5 amp charger. So I think they're gonna come with a five amp charger, but you're definitely gonna to have to check with um, Free Motion to see if that's just added on what the added on one that they gave to us just for testing. But pretty sweet, you can charge it very fast having the five amp charger, and then you can buy another five amp charger, dual port, dual charge it up, and get it up to charge in maybe three hours that quickly. So that's really nice. You can go up to 80 miles with someone going 15 miles per hour and weighing 160 pounds, which sounds about right, to be honest with you. So at 15 miles per hour, I do think you could probably squeeze that out of it. Me, myself, based off of my riding and kind of riding very fast and hard, I'll probably get 30 to 30, 35 miles of range out of it, and I'll happily get 30 to 35 miles of range out of it. I don't expect to get huge numbers when I'm punching the gun the whole time. What scooter would you say that this is comparable to, or what should they look at if they're they're looking for other models. What's comparable to this? 
I would say, so just talking about off my head of what we reviewed is like a 72 volt um, 011X, but that's gonna be $500 cheaper. So you are gonna get a little bit, um, you're gonna get a little bit of a discount to the compared to 011X. And the 011X is gonna have two, two stems on it. So it's gonna be a lot of people like that. This is also gonna be compared to a Cabo, uh, a Cabo Wolf King, which is another 72 volt monster. It's being sold right now at $3,000, but I have been told that the pricing should be increasing on those as well. So I think those will probably be retailed around $3,500 as well. Other comparable scooters is the Dualtrons. And I haven't had a lot of time on any Dualtrons. I've only ridden one. And so the nice thing is I do think we're gonna have an opportunity to, to, to demo out a lot of other Dualtrons here in the future. But um, so this would be comparable to a lot of Dualtrons out there. There's a, the Dualtron Storm, uh, the Dualtron Ultra 2. So, and those ones are, are about the same price range or even a little bit more expensive as well too. So you have um, kind of a wide range of scooters. So I'd say this is probably the most comparable to that people will identify it with is probably the Dualtron look. It very, looks very similar to the Dualtron look with the, the single stem. However, it doesn't have the light down the stem as well. So that's what Dualtron does have over it, but they don't have the sine wave controllers. They use a mini motors controller on um, the Dualtrons, which I like the Mini Motors controller, but a sine wave controller is much better in my book. Strap your seatbelts in because we're going for a ride. I'm not keeping up with him on the EU season. Sure. <laughs> That thing is bad! Okay, we got there in 7.32 seconds, 0 to 50. Dang. But we did use a little bit of a hill as assistance, so it's not the most accurate reading, but still, it's pretty insane that the thing can accelerate so fast. What was your top speed on that one? 56 miles per hour. Andrew asked me if I wanted to ride it. I'm okay sticking around 35 miles an hour on the EUC, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It's awesome.